Sunday school lesson for May the 3rd, 2015, Lesson 10. We still started from Unit 2, which is our last lesson from this unit. The Community of Beloved Disciples. The Community of Beloved Disciples. We have seen that this community that we are dealing with is a community of born-again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And a disciple we have seen is a learner and a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we have a subject that says, In this community, let's work together. Let's work together, a statement that in this community, since we are all born again, uh, believers in Lord Jesus Christ, God is our Heavenly Father and we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are representing Him in this earth now. He's not walking these streets like we are, like He did over 2,000 years ago, but we are His representative. And we must learn how to work together. Unity. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters in Christ to dwell together in unity. Our lesson is taken from uh, 2 Timothy, I mean the background scripture is uh, taken from 2 Timothy, okay, the second chapter, verses 14 through 19. And many a time we quote these verses, and particularly the 15th verse, Study to show thyself, approve unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, cutting a straight line, to the word of truth, which is the word of God. And when we cut a straight line and rightly divide it, then we are to put into practice the things that we have learned. Don't deviate from it. The Spirit of God is going to teach us, illuminate our understanding, and then we must put into practice because we know it is true. The print is taken from 3 John, uh, not the 14 verses, but these 14 verses is uh, so loaded with very pertinent information and instruction for us to follow today. As we look at this lesson, and we have three aims from the adult quarterly. And look at those aims and study them closely. Number one, learn the importance of hospitality. As it is written in the book of 3 John. What do you mean by hospitality? Learn the importance of hospitality. As it is written. When we speak about uh, hospitality... We're speaking about kindness, how we greet someone, okay, uh, friendliness. We're speaking about uh, the warmth that we give them, how we welcome them, okay, and how kind we are to them, how sincere we are to them. We are not putting on uh, uh, A situation where we are not sincere in what we are doing. You know people can tell when you are a phony. But hospitality makes a person feel welcome. Okay. And then number two. Tell of the experiences of hospitality. And the reaction to it. Each one of us in our lives. Okay. Have had some experiences. To show kindness and hospitality. And not only how it made other people feel, but how it made you feel when you know you are sincere and uh, helping someone else and showing kindness to them. And then number three, as we study this lesson, we are to practice acts, plural, of hospitality. Practice. It doesn't do us any good to study God's Word and know what the Word of God says. And not put into practice the thing that we have learned. Okay, Don't let it be said 
I cannot hear a word you say for seeing what you do. Sometimes we can talk a good talk, but we don't walk the walk. Someone said, if you don't walk it, don't talk it. Okay? Very important lesson. Okay? And we want to remember the lesson we had last Sunday from Second John. They were dealing with uh, uh, false missionaries. They were going out uh, saying things that were not true. And we was instructed, okay, not to uh, work on them in your house. And don't bid them God speed. Okay, don't financially support that type of thing because uh, if they're not uh, telling the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, then there's no salvation or saving power in what they're saying. But this lesson is just the opposite. Okay, we are now dealing with those who are spreading the word of God. And we have three main characters. Okay, and I've lesson there along uh, before with the writer John. And uh, we want to see, okay, these instructions. Okay, now, uh, as we get into this lesson, and uh, be sure and read from your uh, quarterly the biblical, uh, the background, the content, okay? And uh, then we have uh, three main outlines from our book. And it talk about fraternal greeting. How we're going to greet those that are in the same fraternity, okay, the family of God. And then number uh, two, we're going to uh, study here about an example to emulate, okay, verses five through eight. And then number three, an example to avoid. Think about that. One to e emulate and another one to avoid. Now, when we go through this lesson and we're going to find that... Uh, 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 John is writing to a man by the name of Gainas, okay, and uh, uh, in the first part of the lesson, and he called him his well-beloved, okay, and then we're going to find out that uh, how he is uh, how he's praying for him, and how he wanted him to prosper spiritually. Uh, uh, some believe that he might have been in bad health, and uh, but some preachers that. This is a prosperity doctrine, but this is not, okay? But he was praying that his health, okay, uh, he would have uh, good health and uh, uh, as he uh, prospered spiritually. And then he's going to be praying for him uh, and thinking that he walking in the truth, okay, which is the Lord Jesus Christ and his word, quite a testimony. And then uh, he's going to be... Uh, 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 Thanking him for that uh, he brought joy to the believers by his testimony, what people are saying about him. And then how he helped Christian believers and strangers. And he was a dynamic example before the whole church. Okay. And he should continue to minister and to show hospitality. Why? Because traveling ministers go forth for Christ without regular income and we're going to see that okay they were not accepting help from unsaved people okay but he needed to be followed okay uh, uh, and working in truth and then we're going to see in this lesson okay uh, another example okay about a man by the name of Diosophies okay how he uh, uh, if elevated himself above that which he ought to. Now, we don't know uh, why or how he got in this position, okay, to be such a dictator in the church. But this is what the uh, outline was saying, of uh, example to avoid. Okay, very important lesson. The, we still have people today thinking themselves more highly than they ought to think, Okay. And the 12th chapter of Romans tell us about that. Okay, let no man think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Okay, so therefore, as we look at the beginning of this lesson, okay, uh, the elder, okay, John is talking about himself. It is believed that John uh, wrote this letter somewhere around 90 AD. And uh, if that is true, all the other apostles were dead. And John now is a pretty old man, okay, and he called himself the elder, 
unto the well-beloved Gainas, whom I love in the truth. Okay, love. Now, in First John, he dealt a lot about this word love. And we find in uh, uh, 1 John 3.16 that uh, uh, love have, is, is sometimes we say uh, the three D's of love. Love is to have a desire for someone. Love is to have a delight in someone. Love is denial of self for the good of somebody else. This is the same type of love that Lord Jesus Christ had for mankind when he came into this world. Therefore, as someone said, also known, Love is to have a desire for someone. Love is to, I mean, uh, uh, to live is to love. To love is to live. To live without love is no life to live. And uh, therefore, we must learn how to love because of uh, the reason why we are saved today. If we go John 3.16, okay. But uh, he loved him and the truth. Okay, and Jesus Christ is the truth and his word. Okay, then he says, uh, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, uh, even as thy soul prospers, E-T-H. Your soul continues to prosper, but also uh, I'm praying that, uh, that uh, you be in good health. Okay, now this is not, as some people preach, he was praying for a guy to be rich. But he was praying for his soul, okay, as his soul prosper. He was praying for him to be in good health. Now, it is believed by some that he was a uh, a man, that his health was failing him. And uh, John wanted him to be in good health. And he was praying for him to be healed, be in good health. As his soul continued to prosper, even though if his body was in uh, bad health, his soul was prospering. But he wanted his uh, body to be in good health and prosper just as his soul. But look what he said in that third verse. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren, generic term for brother and sister, came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth, liveth, okay, in the truth, the word of God, in Jesus Christ. So apparently... Uh, uh, Gainas here was uh, from another church and maybe uh, uh, John had something to do with that church and uh, getting started maybe he had something to do with many of the people in that church being saved but here was a man okay that John was in Ephesus and he had heard about okay this person that he had been instrumental in leading to Christ and the life that he was living and how it made him feel okay uh, I rejoiced Greatly, okay, when the brother and sister came to me and told me about your way of life, how you walk it, you live it in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. The one that I have led to the Lord, okay, they are living in the Word. They are living in Jesus Christ. Okay, they are following the example that I set, and I will follow the, uh, uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit. My friends, when someone comes and say that uh, 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 this about you and me, okay, they have been instrumental in leading you to Christ, they helped you to learn some things about the Word of God, and then they found out that you are living according to, okay. i never forget... My grandson came to me one day, and I, they, my mother named him Herman. He said, Grandpa, when I get to be a man, like, I want to be just like you. Now, friend, that made me feel good. He says, uh, I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you in this name. I'm going to wear this name proudly, just like you wear it, okay? And when I was pastoring, a young kid in the church, where he'd always come in my office and talk to me, and he said, the pastor, I'm drunk. When I get grown, I want to be like you. I want to be a preacher of God's word, okay? And uh, it made me feel good, friend. And uh, therefore, okay, uh, 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 that I try to live a life, okay, as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Not because uh, uh, just what they were saying, 
But I want to live that life because who I am in Christ. And then I live that life, then they can see Christ in me. Okay, so he was saying here, when I heard about, okay, the life where you live, okay, and I led you to the Lord, okay, through the power of Jesus Christ, okay. All right, and then when we get to the uh, second outline, we have here an, exa an example to emulate, to follow. Okay, now remember last Sunday's lesson, uh, it gave us the uh, example not to follow and what we should not do, but here is just the opposite. Notice that fifth verse. Beloved, well beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to uh, the brethren and to strangers. Okay? Strangers, traveling missionaries. They will come to your house. Okay? And you offer hospitality. Not putting on a show, but from the heart. So therefore, he said, that uh, you do it faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. They are not uh, people who you know personally, but who they represent, okay? And uh, as they travel from place to place, the many times they needed places to stay. Remember, they didn't have the hotels and motels. And uh, therefore... They had depending on staying in somebody's house, okay? And therefore, you was uh, uh, working them in, offering them hospitality, and you were doing it faithfully from the heart. And John said, it really made me, makes me feel good. Which you are born witness of the charity love before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godless soul, Thou shall do well. Okay. You are representing the church. Now remember the church is the body of Christ. Okay. This community. And you are working in them. Then it says, Why? Because that for his name's sake, when they uh, went forth, taking nothing off the Gentile, these missionaries, they came to your house. They needed help. They needed a place to stay. They weren't going to the unsaved and accepting financial help from them. Okay. But they uh, needed financial help from the Christian. We talk about uh, our God, how he's going to supply all of our needs. Then we got to go out and beg the unsaved, okay, to do it. To give us some money. Help the church. Help me spread the, God, the word of God. And those people that you're begging money from don't believe in your God. Okay? They don't have the Holy Spirit. In Old Testament, when the uh, 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 Nehemiah, okay, and the people were leaving, and uh, they were afraid to... Uh, 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 to go and ask the king, not afraid, but they would be ashamed to ask the king for a uh, 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 soldier to give them safe journey because of the wealth they had. They were taken back to Jerusalem. And they said that they had been talking about how powerful and how their God was going to protect them. And now uh, they're going back with all of this wealth. And they was ashamed to go and ask the king to give us military protection from uh, the uh, uh, bandits that might rob us. And we've been talking about how powerful our God is. Okay? So they wouldn't ask him. But they prayed to God for protection. And God gave them protection. So here, okay, they were not uh, actually begging money from unsaved people. And Paul said the same thing about his missionary journey. He worked as a tent maker to support himself, okay? But he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't want the people saying that he was out there just preaching for the money, okay? But yet and still, today we have some preachers uh, say they're preaching and they, and they are doing this. 
Okay, when I was pastoring, there was a young a man said he had been called to preach and he wanted to come to the church and preach, but he wouldn't work. Okay, he left his wife and family it's because he said a, a preacher shouldn't work. Okay, he should be paid to to travel and uh, and uh, preach the gospel, but yet still he wouldn't work to take care of his family. Okay, so we got to be awful careful. Okay. And who we are giving financial help to. So it says here. Uh, uh, he wouldn't accept money from the Gentile. Unsaved people. We therefore ought to receive such. That we might be fellow helpers. Or to the truth. Okay. Many times. Uh, uh, we hear people say that if you cannot go. You can send go. Okay. You can send some money. Okay. This was the instruction when uh, the Jews were leaving uh, 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 and uh, the king told them, okay, that all of those that want to go, they could send, uh, they could go, but those that didn't want to go, want to stay in the Persian Empire, okay, he said, then you can send some financial help to those that are going back home. And many times we sang the song, if you cannot cross the ocean and foreign mission land explore, you can help the need and never, you can help them at your door. Okay. So here, okay, he was telling them that when you help the traveling missionaries, okay, then you are, are helping to get the word of God out. Fellow helpers, work together. Helping them to get the truth out. And then we get to the uh, last part of our lesson. Verses uh, 9 through 14. Now we have an example uh, to uh, avoid. This man here is diosophy. Okay. A dictator. The word of God doesn't tell us who he was in this church, how he got to be in such a position. But we got to remember that a person uh, uh, should never have this type of authority in the church as a dictator. Got to have his way. Okay. We find the instruction even to the pastors in the church. Read First uh, uh, Peter 5 and look at the first four verses. Okay. And Peter gave instruction to the elders, the leader of the church. Uh, don't you lord over God heritage. Lord means rule over. But you show a spirit of humility. You feed the flock. But don't you lord over, don't you rule over them. Okay, you're not the ruler. And then we find in the book of of uh, Acts when the Apostle Paul was on his way okay, uh, to uh, Jerusalem for the last time and he sent for the elders to meet him at Malita from Ephesus and they met him there and he had them to understand you shepherds you feed the flock of God which he have made you overseer they are not yours they are the flock of God and he had just made you overseer but your job is to feed them okay so here, Diosophy. Apparently Paul had wrote him a letter. Okay. And he refused the letter. And notice what he said about him. I wrote unto the church, but Diosophy, who loved to have the preeminent among them, received us not. He loved to have the uh, preeminent. Elevated himself more highly than he ought to do, to do so. What did he get? How did he? Who? The, he didn't say uh, uh, where this church was, or uh, what uh, authority that this man had, and how he got this authority. Okay, but remember the unity, the unit that we have. We are to work together. All of us have a gift by the Holy Spirit. Okay, but when a person in a church. Elevate themselves more highly than they ought to think. And they want to have the preeminent. Okay. Who is the most important person in the church? 
there was a book out, and I hate uh, 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 I just when I, when I read that book, I just couldn't believe it. Some people are saying the pastor is the most important part. Some say the member. Some say the pastor because uh, if without the pastor, uh, uh, there wouldn't be no church. And some say the member. If there was not the members, you wouldn't need a pastor. But why uh, uh, go to that uh, end and, and instead of just saying that uh, uh, let us work together? We all have a job. Some of us think that we are, uh, 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 that church cannot go on without me. Well, it went on before you. And when you die, if the Lord haven't came for the church, it's going to go on without you. Okay. But we want to learn how to work together. But Diosophy is here. He wants to have the um, uh, preeminent. And then note that 10th word. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deed, which he doeth, prating about us uh, with ma uh, malicious words, and not content uh, there, uh, therewith, Neither does he himself receive the brethren, and forbid them their wood, and cast them out of the church. He got so much power. He wouldn't receive the traveling missionaries. And he would tell the people in the church, if you receive them into your house, I am going to put you out of the church. Think about that. He wanted the preeminent. The word of God said, help the traveling ministry that are preaching the word. And this man saying, if you receive them, I'm going to put you out of the church. Where do you get that type of authority? There are some people today in the church They say, if I can't have my way, I'll quit. Well, if that's your attitude, you should quit. Okay? Then he says, in the 11th verse, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God. But he that doeth evil have not seen God. Paul wrote to the church in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, so around the 14th verse, where there is uh, 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 envy, strife, and division among you. Okay, you are living like, uh, notice there's a, a simile. He didn't say you're not saved, but you're living like men, you're living like unsaved people. The church, the body of Christ, okay? No man should think of themselves more highly. And they cause endless strife and division. I don't care who you are and how wrong you might be. Each one of us has some influence on someone else. If you have a leader, a pastor, that is divisive, somebody going to follow them, and they're going to cause division in the church. Okay? God is no respected person, even though we in the church have different position and different gifts. But we should never think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. When you are in a church and there is envy, strife, and division and, and, and uh, lack of love among the people, you can tell when people don't love you. Okay? You can fool some of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool everybody all the time. And I hate to hear people and preachers get up in the church talking about, I love everybody. And yet and still, they are showing a dislike or envy, strife, and division, envies and jealousy. 
Okay. The book of Proverbs talks about the thing God hates, the sixth chapter, and it says seven more things. And uh, if they that sow discord among the brethren, God hates that. Okay. So here, it says that. Uh, 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 but then he talked about Demetrius, okay, has a good report of all men and of the truth itself, yea, and we also bear record and know that our record is true. While well, Diosophy, dictator, don't follow that type of uh, leadership. Don't allow that person to get that type of authority in the church. The Bible talks about uh, uh, sometimes you got to discipline, okay, certain people in the church. But then uh, Demetrius, he had a good report, okay. The report is true. I have many things to write. But I will not with uh, ink and pen write unto thee. You know, when we can talk face to face with someone, writing is sometimes uh, the only thing we can do, or, or talk on the phone. But when we talk face to face, okay, then notice that they had a telephone and the modern technology is either writing or face to face. So here he said, I want to come. And I will talk to you face to face, okay? And, uh, and see the expression on another person's face when you're talking to them and they know that they are wrong, okay? I trust that shortly to see thee. And we shall speak face to face. Peace be unto you. Uh, uh, our friend salute thee. Greet. The friends by name. Notice that closely. Greet the friend by name. Just 14 verses here. But very, very powerful. In this community, and go back to the theme. The community of beloved disciples. Things you should learn to do. People you should learn to follow up if they follow Christ. But then there are some people you should avoid. Okay. I could tell you some things that you wouldn't believe that are going in, in the churches about uh, love and pretending. Okay. But I won't get involved. But study the word of God. And I don't care how much you might love a person. If they're leading wrong, don't follow them. Hmm? Don't follow them. Leave them alone. Pray about it. I have no control over how you treat me. But I certainly have control over or our response to your mistreating. Okay? I have control over that. As I study God's Word, I want to learn how to put into practice the thing that I have learned. Okay? The Spirit of God teaches, and the Spirit of God can bring things back to your remembrance. But you have to put it in first. May God bless you. May he keep you. And we hope to see you in Sunday school Sunday morning.